Hi, my name is Saro from Soundpits and today I'd like to show you VoxPad 2 from Digital Brain Instruments. VoxPad 2 is a very versatile creature, monster and robotic voice designer. It's a standalone application for Mac and Windows. So let's have a look how to work with VoxPad 2. First, let's have a look at the input section. In VoxPad 2 you have three kinds of source audio that can then be processed. Number one, you have two microphone inputs. So if I bring up the fader here, you can see my voice is coming into VoxPad 2 in real time. I could connect another microphone to microphone input 2 to process the two inputs simultaneously. Each of the inputs can be muted and the microphone inputs also have high pass filters, which cut at 100 Hz. With the mixer, which is a spectral mixer, you can split the frequency ranges for the input signals. The standard configuration is mode 1 and mic 2. This means microphone 1 covers all the frequencies inside the yellow box and microphone 2 covers all the frequencies outside the yellow box. In mode 2 it's inversed which microphone covers which frequency range. You also have the possibility to use the sample player instead of microphone 2 for the frequency split. If you already have pre-recorded voice performances, you can use a sample player to trigger these. The sample player is located up here in the top right. You can use one of the great preset sounds or you can point to a specific file or a specific folder on your hard drive, load the sound and play it back. Let's take grunt 1, bring up the dry level and play. The playback can be looped by pressing the L key. Even before going to any further processing, you can adjust the playback speed and pitch of each sample. If you quickly want to listen to the sample without any processing, you can switch to OUT. But that's not all. With the multiplayer, you can load up to four samples, which can then be played back simultaneously. You can open the multiplayer here, and as you can see, we already have our previously loaded sample in layer 1. Each of the samples can be reversed, can be played back as a loop, and you can adjust the playback speed, pitch and volume. To load additional samples, you can easily drag and drop them here, or you can point to a specific file or a specific folder on your hard drive. When using the folder option, all the content of this folder gets loaded as a preset list, so you can easily access all the files in that folder from the drop-down menu. With the player sync button, you can easily sync the playback of the sample layers with the real-time inputs. So, if I turn it on, test, 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 all the sample layers are played simultaneously if the level of the input is higher than the sensitivity threshold. Additionally, you can do a cross-morphing between input 1 and 2 and input 3 and 4, or you can play all four at once. The fourth instrument lets you load and play a VST instrument. This could be any synthesizer or sampler in VST format. So we go on Edit. I load apps in stereo and link my MIDI keyboard to it. Then I bring up the instrument volume and now I can play my synthesizer. Now let's have a look at the MIDI matrix. In the MIDI matrix you can configure any MIDI controller to control most of the parameters of VoxPad 2. So first you select your MIDI driver and then you just have to press the buttons in front of each parameter and move the appropriate MIDI controller. And as you can see, all control changes are immediately learned and linked. If you want to keep your MIDI matrix settings when loading another preset, just make sure that the MIDI rack is turned off, otherwise the MIDI matrix settings that are stored within each preset are loaded. And now I can control any fader from VoxPad 2 with my MIDI or OSC controller. Now we'll have a look at the heart of VoxPad 2 which is the effects mixer. Here we have 15 channels of parallel effects processing and several routing possibilities. So let's go through the effects mixer step by step. First, 
Let's check out the controls on top of each channel. I give you the possibility to send the outputs of each channel to either group 1, group 2, both or none. This gives you the flexibility to create two different effects mixes, which can then be mixed with the voice morphing fader. New in version 2 is the LFO. The LFO can be turned on for each channel and is controlled globally. All adjustments regarding the LFO can be done here in the LFO window. You can adjust the LFO rate and you have the possibility to modulate the LFO rate with another LFO. If turned on, the LFO modulates the amplitude of a channel. Next are the balance knobs to create very rich stereo voice effects. And of course, each channel can be muted and soloed. Now let's check out what each of the channels does. The first four channels are a very good point to start from. These are pre-designed effects and each is a differently pitch shifted version of the input signal. So I bring up the faders and we have a listen with the preset sounds. Let's take Grunt 10. Even with these four channels alone, you can create hundreds of different creature voice effects. These four channels can't be adjusted any further. The next 10 channels all have their own control panels. So let's check out the first one and start with the noiser. The noiser is some kind of a dual vocoder with noise carriers. This always gives great breathy results. The next one is Mammal. Mammal procedurally generates harmonics according to the input signal. This one is great when it comes to artificial robotic voice design. Number three is the shifter, or better, the granular pitch shifter, which is a six channel pitch shifter. Each of the channels can be pitched individually. You can set a sensitivity threshold for each channel. This means when this channel is triggered regarding the input level. You can delay each channel to each other and you can set the volume for each channel. So let's have a listen. And you can randomize the pitch settings for each channel. Number four is the sample convolution channel. This one looks kind of similar to the multiplayer. You can also load up to four samples in layers. These can be adjusted in speed, pitch and volume. You can also load samples by dragging and dropping them here. Additionally, you can set an envelope for each sample. And these samples or the mix of these samples is then convoluted to the input signal in real time. Think of it like a convolution reverb and each sample can be previewed. Number five is another sample player. This one again looks kind of similar to the multiplayer. Again, you can load up to four samples and set envelopes for each sample. And you can adjust playback speed, pitch and volume for each sample. The special thing here is that the samples are triggered by the input signal. So as soon as you have an audio input in this channel, from the microphone inputs, the sample player or the instrument player, these samples are triggered. If you want to trigger the samples manually, you can set it to audio off. Now you can play back the samples by pressing the Z key. With the play mode, you can set how long the samples should be played. Normally, 
the sample is played as long as the input signal is over the sensitivity threshold. So if the input signal stops, also the playback stops immediately. You can also say play to sample end. So once the sample is triggered, it always plays to its end. You can cross morph between layer 1 and 2 and layer 3 and 4, or you can play a mix of all four channels, which then can be pitch shifted. Number 6 is the plugin morphing channel. Here again, like in the instrument input channel, you can load any VST instrument. So I point to my plugin folder and load an instrument. And now, as soon as I press a key on the keyboard, the output from the synthesizer gets convoluted with any of the input signals. Test recording, one, two, three. Test recording, one, two, three. Test recording, one, two, three. Channel number seven is the spectral shifter. This one is very interesting, combined with the input mixer. In the spectral mixer, we had this link button, which I didn't talk about before. If I press this button, the frequency selection of the input spectral mixer and the spectral shifter are linked. And now I can define different pitch values for the inner section and the outer section. Additionally, you can define two amplitude ranges, means only audio inside the yellow amplitude ranges will be pitch shifted, anything else not. Let's have a listen. Test recording. One, two, three. 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 Number eight is the delay pitch shifter. Here you have a delay where each loop gets pitch shifted by the selected amount. Let's check it out. I bring up the feedback and I press play. I can pitch it down or I can pitch it up. I can even pitch up and down in octaves. Additionally, we have a filter for each delay loop, so you can set a high pass or a low pass filter to get rid of unwanted frequencies. There's also a second module here, which is a dynamic time based pitch shifter, which automatically pitch shifts the input signal in user definable time steps. You can set it to pitch up or pitch down, and so now the signal gets pitch shifted automatically every 469 milliseconds. Number 9 is a dual ring modulator, which comes in very handy when it comes to robotic voice designs. So I bring up this fader and bring this one down, and we have a listen. Test recording. One, two, three. Test recording. One, two, three. Test recording. In channel number 10, you have the possibility to load up to two VST effect plugins, which can be set to process the input signal in a serial mode or parallel mode. So I loaded a plugin, I press on view to bring up the user interface, I bring up the fader and we have a listen to it. Test recording. One, two, three. Test recording. One, two, three. Test recording. The last channel is just a dry signal. So this can also be mixed with all the other 14 effects channels. Now we have a look in the upper left section where we find the equalizers and filters. This is not a global equalizer and filter, but can be applied to each channel individually. Just select any channel by clicking on the name and you will see the name and equalizer changes accordingly. So any changes made in the equalizer or filter will only affect the selected channel. There are two other very interesting menus that I want to show you. They are called input depending and delays. Input depending lets you set a sensitivity threshold for each of the effects channels. This means only if the input level is higher than the set threshold, the appropriate effects channel gets triggered. With the delays matrix, you can delay each channel to each other. This way you can create very rich and full creature and monster voice designs. Now we'll have a look at the output section of Voxpad 2. First, the master rack. In the master rack, all the single effects channels are summed together. And you have the possibility to do some further processing and fine tuning. 
You can load up to two VST FX plugins, like a limiter or maybe some reverb, and you can decide if your master signal should be processed in parallel mode or serial mode. You also have a master EQ to do some final adjustments. You have a filter which can be set to high pass or low pass, and you have another final pitch shifter to pitch shift your master output. New in version 2 is the XY pad to control your master pitch and clone pitch at once. Now let's check out how to create and bounce new WAV files from your designed creature and monster voices. If you work with pre-recorded voice performances, you can use the easy process function, which is new in version 2. So I load a sound like Grunt 18. Let's have a listen. And I want this one to be bounced to my hard disk. So I click on edit, select my bit depth and file format, select if it should be mono or stereo, and I choose a destination folder to save the sample. Anything you write in the name field will be added to the original name, something like processed. If you've used any delay or reverb plugins in the effects channels or in the master rack, you can add some extra time, so any reverb or delay tails won't be cut. I close this window and I say process. The sound is bounced in real time and just a few seconds later I have my new processed WAV file. This is a very fast way to create multiple variations of one sound in no time. Another way is to use the recording panel. Again here you can set your bit depth and your file format. You can select if your recording should be mono or stereo, choose the destination and enter a name, like. You can check your input levels, so I bring it down here and play it back. Seems to be okay. And now as soon as I hit rec, any input signal which runs through the effects processing and the master rack will be recorded in our new file recording one, which already was generated on my desktop. I press rec and I press play in the player and now we play around. On the fly. Done. Let's check out the file. And as you can see, the whole performance was recorded in our new WAV file. In the RecMe panel you can record short voice performances, without any effects, to process them later. This can be done in two takes. So I bring up my microphone here, go back to RecMe, choose 3 seconds, take 1 and press Rec. This is take 1. And this is take two. Rec. This is take one. And this is take two. You can also play them back simultaneously. This, and this is, is take, take one. Two. And now I'd like to save these two takes. So this would be saved as take one. And I save take two as take two. If you have several pre-recorded creature voice performances, you can all process them at once, using the batch processor of VoxPad 2. Again, you can select your bit depth and your file format. Now you can select the source folder, which is my voices clean female folder, okay, and a destination folder, which is on my desktop. Again, you can add a name to it. 
You can add some extra time if you've used effects like delays and reverbs. And as soon as I hit start, all the files in the source folder will be processed through Voxpad 2 one after another. So I bring up some faders here and I say start. All the adjustments I do while recording or while batch processing are recorded. As soon as I press cancel, all sounds that were processed until then are saved as new WAV files in my destination folder.